What are the implications of all of this? And I know this is something that's, that's concerned a lot of people. Um, there has been a, a, some scaremongering out there, especially that I've heard of in terms of, oh, we're not ever going to be able to get volunteers ever again. Um, I don't think so. Um, you know, it may be there might be some volunteer reticence, or it may be that some people think about their role as an officer before jumping into it a bit more and do a little bit more research in terms of well, what does it actually involve. Um, so, yeah, possibility that there might be a bit of volunteer reticence, um, but I think for good organisations that are clear about why they exist and what they're doing and they have a good, clear policies and procedures on how they actually operate, um, there shouldn't be volunteer reticence with this. Will it mean operational changes? Possibly. Um, is there a cost to this? Uh, yes, there is a cost to re-register and every organisation has to re-register, but um, the dollars in that is quite low in terms of the actual registration cost. I think it was something like $40 or $50 I saw somewhere. Um, don't hold me to that, but um, it's very much like a, a, a company set up. Um, you know, New Zealand's one of the easiest countries in the world to set up a new company. Um, and likewise, it's administratively quite easy uh, to set up going forward a uh, incorporated society as long as you've got all of the relevant information uh, that you need to do that. Um, I do make a point though that if you are also wanting to register as a charity, that can take substantially longer. Um, the Registrar of Incorporated Societies is effectively the Registrar of Companies with a different hat on. Um, charity Services is a completely different department that sits within the Department of Internal Affairs. And uh, I know that uh, if you want to register a new charity at the moment, you've got a wait of about a month um, to get that done uh, with a fair wind behind you. Um, I was speaking to a lawyer colleague today and I was just asking him, had he registered any incorporated societies recently? And uh, he said, yes, he had, he had one. And, and uh, interestingly, they have to be registered on the, um, under the 1908 Act at the moment. Um, I think it's later in the year that it kicks over that you have to um, register under the 2022 Act. But he basically registered a new incorporated society with all of the provisions that would comply with the 2022 Act under the old Act. Uh, and he said it took him two days to get it registered. So, um, yeah, administratively quite easy in that regard. Um, and I'm sure that there will be some other practical uh, implications as they come out, and maybe we'll, we'll um, flag some of those uh, in the Q&A afterwards. So, with any change, it can be uh, a bit overwhelming in terms of, um, you know, what does this mean? What are we doing here? Uh, and, you know, we do all have a negative bias to change. Um, even people, they've done studies on it actually, even people that say, yes, I love change. Um, most of them, when they study their body language and behaviors, will still do things that show they don't like change. They just program themselves to say, I really like change. Um, so we have a negative bias, but we need to get over that. Um, we've got a change in front of us, therefore it's an opportunity for how can we do things better? Um, you know, how can we help protect our code to be sustainable and successful into the future and structurally are there some things that we can do that might um, might help us there uh, and what does our code need to look like in five years time and in ten years time um, you know it's always a really useful thing when you have to make a fundamental change is to look out a bit further and go hmm should we be doing something different now to help set ourselves up for the future what's happening there you now one of my roles is I have a, a small role with um, Ngāti Whātua Orake where I chair their Risk Audit and Assurance Committee. And they have a 2050 vision. So their, their plan is looking out 50 years. And in fact, actually, they look out 100 years. Um, so it's always really useful. It changes your perspective on what you need to do when you look further out. So your action list, what do you have to take away? What do you have to do? Well, firstly, start. Um, yep, you need to understand the current state, your constitution, a little bit like the Charities Act when that, that legislation first came in. What it forced a lot of charities to do was actually firstly find their constitution and then read it uh, to make sure that, um, that it applied. So, um, yep, all incorporated societies are going to need to have a good understanding of what's in their constitution now, what's going to need to be changed um, and to, to start on that process. 
But it's really important also to understand your strategy, the environment that you operate in. What are the challenges that you're facing now? What are the opportunities for fixing or improving some of those? And you know, consider those big picture strategy, structure, opportunity questions that I posed earlier, those fundamental questions. Um, identify what changes are going to be needed, uh, and then yeah, get on with making the changes. Um, so you will need some legal assistance possibly with this, um, but there's some fantastic resources out there and I'll have references uh, to this at the end of the presentation on two lawyers who have um, already produced some fantastic free things on their websites uh, to allow people to walk through what changes are needed and how to do that. Um, if, well, all constitutions that I'm aware of and incorporated societies, if you need to change anything, they require special meetings and membership um, processes to go through. So often there's time frames with those. You need to get onto that sooner rather than later and work out what's going to be needed. Um, and when there's changes needed to a membership uh, structure, members need to be consulted and kept informed. So that will uh, require a little bit of money. Um, if you have to wind up an entity as part of this process, that can um, flag a few challenging things. Uh, you know, contracts sometimes need to be closed down or novated to another entity um, and issues like that. If organizations are going to be merged, then again, that requires governance structures to be uh, thought about and principles and all sorts of um, uh, legal issues to work through if you're doing that. Um, so yeah, there's, there's quite a few things to think about there, um, but don't be too overwhelmed with it. It's not too scary when you actually get into the detail. So just on that perspective, um, and, and I've already kind of alluded to this, we spend most of our days uh, on the left-hand side of the screen there. Well, if the left-hand side is the serene, lovely picture of being in the forest. Um, that's our happy place. That's doing whatever it is our sporting code does. That's working day to day. But occasionally we need to get up in our helicopter. And you know that picture hopefully shows why there's a need to get up in our helicopter occasionally, because sometimes we get to see a wider perspective and that there might be big threats out there. Although interestingly, is that fire a threat to the forest or not? Well, whether it's a threat depends on uh, which way the wind's blowing and where we are in the forest. It might be a massive opportunity. So, um, great opportunity to get up in your helicopter in your organization and go right what does this change mean for us what can we actually do here so uh, we're great at putting things off uh, when does all the supply well actually every entity in new zealand every incorporated society is going to be need to be re-registered by i think it's the first of december 2025 that sounds like a long way off. You're able to do it earlier, although you're not able to do it just yet. That's really frustrating, but this legislation has kind of coming in in steps. And in fact, we don't even know all of the dates yet. Some of this still needs to be uh, worked out by orders and council, which haven't yet been um, passed. Um, however, you do need to get started. And really importantly, um, we've got a habit in New Zealand of rushing to structure. Um, I'd suggest it's worth thinking about your strategy before your structure. Uh, so do that big picture thinking first, then get into what do we need to do with the structure. The incorporated society structure is still the right one for us. Yeah, let's deal with that. Success features. Um, across a huge number of organizations, across a huge number of years, um, these are some really common success features. And it's generally a function of the level of agreement and commitment to a shared outcome. Incorporated societies are a democratic model and therefore uh, it's really important that everyone agrees. Uh, doing the work to get agreement, get alignment is a big part of success. Are you creating the future you want or are you sitting on the, bi on the sidelines and spectating? And it's really important to communicate clearly. So you too can have the space of um, pure, unadulterated achievement of having nailed it. Some links I'm leaving you there with. Now, obviously you can't press on your screen and, and get to those, but you will get the slides here so you can go to all of those things. NFP Law, um, Mark von Dalzen is a very um, established lawyer, long-term long lawyer, long-term specialist in incorporated societies. He was a member of the Law Commission that wrote the report. And his website, NFP Law, he's got some fantastic resources. 
Parryfield Law, uh, especially Stephen Moe heading up that one. Um, again, uh, I think he's got about 10 articles up already in terms of different aspects of the Act that really take you through the detail in very plain language and what you need to do and what some of the implications are. Um, there's also the company's office have so done some things there. Sport NZ, I've said, I know they um, are getting some information up. They haven't got there yet, um, but their nine steps guide is, uh, is up there and, and well worth looking at.